Hi guys, so I'll be doing a video today on interviews at Oxford and to help me out is my college dad, JJ. Hi, my name is JJ. I'm also a third year physics student here at Queen's. Uh, I have a YouTube channel myself, The Queen's Physicist, at which I make fun YouTube videos about physics. Together with this video, I will also be releasing a video talking about some past interview questions, so check that out if you're interested in that kind of thing. After you've made your application, you should get an email uh, afterwards saying whether or not you have an interview and they base whether or not you have an interview on your PAT score and your contextual GCSE data. With those two you get something called an R score and then they rank everyone and then have a cutoff point after a certain number. So for 2021 they had a cutoff of 69.9 um, and then everyone below that was rejected except for a few people which had like disadvantaged backgrounds or other contextual data taken into account. For 2021, this was a further 83 applicants added. If you look at the graph, um, you'll see a, so the blue one is the, all the people that apply to Oxford. And then the orange bit is the people that got interviews. And then after that, the black section is the people that actually got off. Uh, most shortlisted candidates will actually be interviewed at the college they originally applied for. But some people will actually also be already pulled to a different college. This is just because some colleges get a lot of applicants and other colleges don't get as many applicants. So they want to smooth out the ratio of number of split places and number of applicants. Of course, if there's a lot of good applicants being interviewed at one college, they'll move around applicants after interviews as well. Here's a table taken from a FOIA request with all the information on applicants and what college had too many applicants and what college had too few applicants. We got these from the internet and we'll have a link in the description down below where you can look at the data yourself. Now I'm going to be talking about my experiences coming to St. John's and Queen's during my interviews. So I interviewed at St. John's for my first two interviews and then my third interview was at Queen's. So I got to see both of the colleges. My first impression of St. John's was that it was really big, modern looking and it had a nice mix of modern and old buildings um, and it's overall really pretty. The GCR was quite busy in the evenings as the student helpers there had run activities in the evenings which quite a few people turned up and took part in. Um, I was personally too nervous to take part in that kind of stuff so I didn't but in the evenings I remember going to the GCR and there were a few quite friendly people that I talked to the only physicists that I saw were two of them and they were sat there doing really hard, like really, really hard looking physics questions. So they did not seem approachable at all and kind of intimidated me quite a lot. So I didn't really talk to that many of the physicists while I was there. I mostly stayed in my room and did the homework that I brought with me and just read my book to kind of calm down and get prepared for my interviews. So I personally didn't want to socialise that much, but there are activities run, so if that's something that you want to do and feel up to, then you can go to the GCR in the evenings and they'll have different activities to get to know people, etc. My interview experience was quite similar. I uh, applied and was interviewed at Queen's actually. And when you get interviewed, you usually have to stay over at Queen's for two days and uh, do three interviews. When I arrived at college, I was immediately greeted by a student helper who showed me around the college and showed me to my room. I didn't feel like sitting by myself in my room too much, so I went down to the JCR and talked to people and socialized with people. And I personally found it quite comforting to be with people who basically are, are in the same situation that they're very, very nervous about what's going to happen in the interviews. Because you have to be in Oxford for two to three days and you only have three interviews, you're actually spending a lot of time just sitting and waiting around for your interviews. So I quite enjoyed being in the JCR during that time. Usually the college that interviews you will also provide you with uh, food and accommodation free of charge. So actually for those two days you're completely provided for. You will however have to pay for your own travel arrangements to Oxford. In this section we'll be talking about how the interviews went overall but not actually going into the specifics of any interview questions. That will be on JJ's channel later. So my first interview at St. John's went terribly. It was my first physics interview and I was really flustered and panicking and halfway through in one of the questions I said momentum wasn't conserved and there was a really awkward silence where they stared at me and then I stared back at them and then for way too long didn't say anything or correct myself but then eventually I was like no that's incorrect haha <laughs> momentum is always conserved um, and then managed to like salvage the interview somehow um, and continued with it but it was quite it was scary when they were just looking at me like 
what the hell did she just say? But I have to say one good thing about this interview was that even though I was panicking, I still like talked aloud and said what I was thinking. You know, after the whole momentum mess up, I did start writing down on the board super equations. So even though I wasn't verbally saying things, I was still expressing what direction that I was going in. My second interview was a lot calmer. There wasn't really anything notable about it. I gave it my best and I think that was kind of reflected in how the interview went. For some reason in my third interview, I got it in my head that this one didn't matter. Um, I'm not really sure why uh, because, you know, obviously each interview is important and you get scored in each of the interviews. But I think because the first one went so badly, I think I kind of just disregarded like Oxford as an option anymore. So I was kind of just like, yeah, I'm not going to get in, whatever. Um, so my third interview was the maths interview and to be honest this was the calmest interview it was just like a normal conversation at the end of the interview I faked interest in one of the questions that they'd asked me it was the um, a balloon in a car one which I think we're going over in the video on Queen's physicist channel you know I wasn't really overly interested in this but I kind of faked it and that kind of matched well with, with the interviewer because he was like super interested in it and like super into it so it was just like you know extra brownie point. Some tips that I have for interviews is to think aloud and if you don't understand what the interviewer uh, means then always ask like what do you mean by that or I didn't understand or could you repeat that that's a lot better than just standing there not doing anything also once you're in Oxford you're most likely going to know everything that you need like all the physics that you need to know for your interview at this point if you want to prepare then uh, going over the fundamental constants or any equations that you need to know will be the most helpful don't try to cram the entire physics A level also if you don't remember one of the equations like you know there's an equation that you need to use in the question you can always be like oh it's escaped my mind by knowing there's an equation for this and they, they'll usually just help you out or like tell you what it is because they'll understand you're nervous as well my first two interviews were actually at queen's my first interview was with a math tutor here at queen's and um i basically sat down on this very very comfy sofa with a white piece of paper and they basically just asked me to sketch some functions find some minima and provide some very standard proofs all in all, I would say this interview was somewhat straightforward. They didn't ask any weird questions to throw me off. It was just basically, hey, can you do the following math problems? And if I got stuck, they did help me out. My second interview was in physics. And uh, the thing I most remember about this interview was basically being very, very nervous for it. Uh, I had to shake my interviewer's hand. Uh, and I just remember my palms being too sweat to actually shake his hand. Uh, but I think the interviewer actually picked up on that and just told me not to be nervous and that it would be just a fun chat about physics, which quite frankly didn't help at all. But they put me in front of the whiteboard and basically just asked me to solve some physics, puzzles, questions, problems. These questions were actually slightly weirder than my math interview questions and I had to think about it a bit more. But I slipped up here and there, but my interviewer was happy to help me out and tell me, oh, actually, I think you made a mistake here and, a mi and I think you made a mistake there. And as the interview progressed, I actually started to become less nervous and they helped me through the questions I was messing up. And towards the end, I think it went fairly okay. My third interview was my external interview at Lincoln College. Uh, and this interview, quite frankly, went not very well. The interview was done by a PhD student and a professor and they actually set a timer so I only had so much time to actually answer every question. Uh, that made me really nervous and slip up a bit. But when I slipped up the professor didn't help me out at all and just basically looked at me like I was stupid and then didn't say anything. Oh, only a Don't go to Lincoln, Lincoln sucks, they were mean to JJ three years ago. <laughs> The PhD student was slightly more helpful and even though this interview didn't go too well, I did end up solving some problems within the given time limit. I think it's important to remember that during interviews, your interviewers usually want you to succeed as well. So if you make a small slip up and mess up, they'll usually try and help you out and guide you slowly in the right direction. Except for Lincoln for some reason, but whatever. Also really don't worry when they correct you or give you a hint. They don't expect anyone to get everything right straight away. That would be inhuman. They just want to see how you think about problems and small slip ups don't really matter that much. 
actually, if you get too much right, I'm pretty sure that they'll make your interview a bit harder just to see at what point you'll slip up. So you'll definitely slip up at some point. Also, don't worry if you feel like your interview went badly afterwards. Don't give up. Quite frankly, my interview and Sana's interviews, not all of them were great, but we still got in. You don't have to ace every interview. You just gotta keep your head up and try and try again. Is that a Star Wars quote? Try, try again. I don't think it's Star Wars. Is it Shakespeare? <laughs> That's all the quotes I know. So you might be interested in how they score your interview. So if you look at this sheet, you'll be able to see that they rank you out of five in different criteria. And then at the bottom, they'll rank you out of 10. And that's your overall score for that interview. Um, and then over the course of your three interviews, you'll each get a score and then they'll average it. And that's your overall score. One of the reasons that you have an interview at a second college is because of this score sheet. So they want to make sure that they're kind of standard over the different colleges. So how important are your interviews? The department decides whether or not to make an offer based both on your interview scores and your PAT scores. Uh, they actually give you a total score. Through that score, they will rank all the candidates in basically a very large spreadsheet. All the candidates above a certain threshold will actually get made offers and some candidates below the threshold because of different circumstances, will also be made offers. When you analyze the data from the FOIA request, you actually see that the standard deviation on interview scores is a bit smaller than the standard deviation on PAT scores. This would mean that actually your PAT is slightly more important than your uh, interview score, though this is slightly speculating because the difference isn't that large and we don't have all the data to fully know the exact details of the process. So if you want more information on the data analysis we've done, you can look at the links that I've put in the description below. Um, also, you can access a lot of things through the Freedom of Information Act and do a what do they know request to Oxford or most, I think, all universities. You should get the results of your interview about halfway through January through an email. They'll also send you a letter, but usually that takes a bit longer. If you managed to get in, well done. The process was really difficult and you managed to pull through. If you didn't manage to get an offer though, don't stress about it. The process was really difficult and just going through it, you would have learned a lot. There are a lot of different reasons why you might not have gotten that offer. Um, one thing you can do is get interview feedback from the colleges where you interviewed. Usually they will send an email out asking if you want your PAT score or your interview score. Uh, I'm not sure if they give the scores, but you're in the interview feedback. So that could be helpful for future applications or any interviews for other universities. You won't really ever find out the exact reasons why you didn't get an offer. So it's important to keep your head up and focus on the universities you did get offers to. Always remember Oxford isn't the end of the road. Yeah, you can still have a successful life in physics or research without having to have gone to Oxford and you'll still be happy at the end of the day. That's all for this video. If you have any questions, then just let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Also, I have an Instagram which you can always DM. Um, it's open and I'll answer any questions. So don't forget to subscribe to JJ's channel, which is Queen's Physicist. Don't forget to subscribe to Sana's channel, Tissai Sana. Um, also, we'll be doing a video on actual interview questions, which will be posted on uh, Queen's Physicist. So I will be posting a video talking about some past interview questions on my channel, so please do check that out if you're interested. Uh, that's all right? That's all. See you in the next video. See you in the next video. Hi guys! Okay, let's not do that one. Please. Um, <laughs> My parents already. <laughs> I'm weird. <laughs> okay. Looking pretty. Uh, so that's all for now. Should I Comments. So, sure. Uh, should I mention uh, the thing? Um and. my math interview questions and how uh, so I will be posting a, a video of uh, sorry so I will be vi <laughs> see you in the next video
Okay, get rid of it. <laughs> Nailed it. 